Hello everyone and welcome back to the Learn SBOM channel. I'm Asa and today we're going to be showing you OSB Scanner, which is a tool by Google for finding vulnerabilities in open source projects. In order to do that, it uses documentation files, project block files, or SBOM files. This one is under very active development. I think the last commit as I'm recording this was five minutes ago, so there might be some rough edges or it may have changed a bit when you go take a look at it yourself. For this video, we're going to start with a few demos and then walk through the installation process. Here we are in an Ubuntu virtual machine. If we look into this examples folder, you can see that I've prepared some open source projects off GitHub to use as examples for this tool. OSV Scanner can be run with a few different types of input. The first and simplest is by passing in an SBOM with the SBOM argument. I'll start by showing you the CDX file that we're going to be using here, which is an example CDX file I found online. There are many components here, many of which have vulnerabilities. So let's see how many OSV scanner can find. We're going to run the OSV scanner binary and use the SBOM argument to pass in the SBOM you see above. There are quite a few issues with the components in this SBOM. For every vulnerability found, we have the ecosystem, the package it was found in and its version, and the source where the dependency was found. Let's take a look at this first vulnerability. Here you can see the OSV page for, for the vulnerability. You can use this to determine how the vulnerability will affect your project and what, what steps need to be taken to mitigate it. Next, let's show check npm lock files. I'll get that running here. Lock files are files which npm generates for itself so that it can do the exact same thing every time. However, conveniently for programs like this, it includes every dependency in the project, so they can be used to scan for vulnerabilities. This project is actively maintained by Google, so it has a lot less vulnerabilities in it. Let's take a quick peek at one of these. As you can see, it's almost identical to the first one we looked at. The last, and in my opinion coolest option, is the ability to run the program against any directory and have it automatically find all of the dependencies. It will then automatically tell you if any of these dependencies have vulnerabilities. Let's give that a shot. First, let's run against the same example we used the last time. It only found the same file that we used last time by manually passing it in. This is correct. There are no other dependency files in this project. Let's try something else. So here it found three different sources of dependencies. However, one vulnerability. I think it's cool that it that this source here is from one of the documentation files. So it ran through a text file for humans and found dependencies in it. It then found a vulnerability within that dependency and it's telling me about it. One more example. Here you can see that it found no documentation, SBOM, or NPM lock files. This is because this is a collection of school projects from one of my friends. This shows that this style of vulnerability scanning does have its downsides, namely that if developers do not provide good documentation, it doesn't work. Moving on to the installation. This one's really easy. Just grab the binary from GitHub and run it as you've seen me doing in this demo. Here we are on the releases page. I'm going to download the Linux version as I'm currently on Linux. If I come back to my terminal, you can see that the binary is in here. Let's change that so I can execute it. Then just to prove that this is the exact same binary, we'll run one of the examples from earlier. As you can see, this is the exact same binary. As for my thoughts on this tool, I love how easy it is to use and how easy it is to install. I think that lowering the bar to security is the only way we will see widespread adoption of SBOMs and general improvements in the security of applications. If you make security a chore, people do a worse job with the simple stuff, like keeping libraries up to date. For that reason, I think that this project is great. With that being said, I do wish you could get CVEs directly from the command line output instead of having to go to OSV. It'd also be very nice to see these sorted or colored by severity, as it is a bit of a chore to dig through all the responses to find out which ones you need to prioritize. However, overall, I think this tool is definitely something that I would use if I was developing something and wanted to quickly check my de dependencies for supply chain vulnerabilities. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Asa for LearnSBOM.com. Have a great day. Thank you for checking out this video. If you really liked it, be sure to check out our other videos right here. And then you can also subscribe right up top here. And again, thank you. Bye-bye.